Stephanie, here in Texas, we are used to wide open country, but you grew up in wide open country as well. Yes, yes, very. I always say growing up in Montana, I feel like Montana's a little brother to Texas. So uh, I, I've got some Texas in my heart, that's for sure. Yeah, all right. One thing about growing up on the farm that you really recognize is that you created a great work ethic. Yes, my there, there was no choice with my parents. Work ethic was ingrained at a very, very young age. And I do think that's just really led how I operate from a entertainer to a, a business owner. It's just a great way to grow up and then be able to implement into your life, you know, and when you earn it, it's so much more satisfying. I mean, I would clean stalls just so I could go ride my horse. So <laughs> there, 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 I have that same mentality with anything I touch. It's like, I've got to earn it. You had a piano in the house at four years old. And for a lot of us, because I had one too, it was like, play that piano because somebody's got to play that piano. Did yes. you play it that way or did you naturally take to it? You know, my mom played and I think everything that my, I mean, my mom sings, my mom plays, so I always watched her. But my step grandmother was a piano teacher and a farmer's wife. So she was tough as nails. I mean, she was, she was a strong woman. <laughs> so <laughs> learning from her, I only, I had, I mean, I learned from her. So it was, you know, recitals and repetition and practice and perfect practice makes perfect. And uh, the only time I could ever get away with anything was during a recital because there was an audience. So every now and then I would sneak in like a little extra note and she would look at me and I knew I was going to get it after. But, you know, I just, I had to get, you know, I have a little bit of that spirit. I like to, you know, push the envelope now. Yeah, that's called creativity. Yeah. Well, the great thing about the piano is that, you know, it's all kind of, you know, all encompassed right there. You can, really? you can sing along with it. But the other thing that's like that is a guitar and, and much more mobile. You took to that at 15. Yes, I love the guitar. Well, and again, you know, starting with piano, I, I didn't even think of myself as, a, as anything at that age. You know, I was four, five, six years old, just like, you know, doing what I was told. And then I started writing poetry. And once I got a guitar in my hands, I started just playing with like three chords and, you know, my 15 year old truth. And uh, it was it was really liberating to just try. I think as a lot of songwriters, you know, where do you start? You start. And, uh, you know, you just keep growing and crafting that. And the guitar has been my companion for so many years. And if I could take a piano with me wherever I go, I mean, I love it too, but I definitely write differently on the piano than I do with the guitar. And the guitar I have is actually made in my hometown in Bozeman, Montana, Gibson. So it's it's just, it's like a whole, I feel like I have a little piece of home with me wherever I go. Aw, I've actually been to Bozeman. It's you like a, a, yes, I did. And I went in the winter time even, so I was oh, really wow. brave, right? Yeah, yeah, that's but, yeah. <laughs> Cold? It was a little chilly, but as we say, it was kind of a drier cold, so yes. I, was, I was able to deal with it because we have yeah. the humidity down here. You're single, what you drinking about? It really took on its shape in the studio and it came alive in a way none of us expected. You know, as a writer, I'm very self-critical, of course. You know, that's how we all are. You know, I can hear someone else's song and be like, oh man, that's a tremendous song. But this one in particular, I was like, yeah, I mean, I don't, I have no idea what a hit is. And <laughs> I don't begin to know. And so then watching it just climb the charts and make its way. And then of course COVID happens and the meaning of what you're drinking about has taken on a whole different unexpected definition that has been very timely. Oftentimes you can tell by just the title that you can relate to it. So right. what you drink about is all that we needed right there to follow along. Right. Uh, your latest EPs, If I Was a Cowboy and the Montana Sessions. All right, and there's something else that you're working on that's kind of cool. Since you grew up on a farm, you know how to work with hogs. So I wrote this song called Evil Knievel, which is on the EP in the Montana Sessions. And Evil Knievel was a Harley rider, a daredevil. And when we wrote the song, myself, Toy Tulier, and Karen Kozowski, we just wanted it to really represent that fearlessness and, and persevering through even difficult times and just finding a way. Yeah. And then that led to conversations with Harley Davidson and we created this video project called From Horses to Horsepower. She taught her how to ride. She's going to teach her again. And honestly, one of the greatest joys of my life is being able to watch back 
that video of my mom teaching me how to ride and the correlation between the love of horses and the love of horsepower. During COVID-19, um, you're currently on a farm in North Carolina and yes. you have your daily Facebook Live broadcast from the barn called, Hey Y'all. Hey y'all, with all my miniature creatures that have grown before the camera's eyes. I, you know, when we created this, it was really a way to stay connected with the fans, keep it, you know, simple, positive, and you know, when you're watching miniature goats and a miniature Hereford steer and miniature donkeys, anything can happen when it's live. And so it's been some of the greatest moments of my life just because you can't make this up. Before COVID-19, a lot of us were just spinning. We were just spinning. We didn't take time for a lot of things. Obviously for you, it takes time to sit back and write a song, but I think also for us, songs mean more to us. You know, it's the first time I think globally, we can't say we're too busy to, right? Mm -hmm. We are all having to reflect in this time now to our first responders, just gratitude beyond gratitude because what they're having to manage is uh, beyond extraordinary. I think for a lot of us, we have the opportunity to slow down and just kind of take inventory. And for myself, this is the first time in my marriage that I've been with my husband consecutively for more than like a couple days or a couple weeks. So for he and I and our family, just really leaning into all the things that we didn't have the time to do, the conversations we didn't have the time to have. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us. Before we actually started rolling here, we were talking about how uh, confusing sometimes technology could be. So I'm waiting for the country song, technology just ain't my friend. I love it, I can't <laughs> wait. I, can I just sing back up on your song? I would just, be perfect. I'll Come be on right down there. to Texas. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it, I can't wait. And I would love to get to spend some time with you when I get to Texas again. I just, it's one of my favorite places to be and, and you're right. awesome, thank you. Thank you.